Jordan Burroughs, one of the most legendary wrestlers of all time. If I bring my A game, I don't think there's anybody in the world that can beat me in a wrestling match. My life is a legit movie. If Jordan Burroughs is a Ferrari, I have a fit gear that very few men can rival. All I ever did was work as hard as I can. Yeah, he's got a great double leg. Really just that hunger, it's insatiable. He can do them because he's worked on them. I wasn't supposed to be here. I was never big, strong, fast. I'm thankful for my wife for letting me go on the road to pursue greatness. I wasn't, you know, this prodigy as a young man that people could be like, oh, that guy's gonna be an Olympic champion someday. I'm adopting your dream and I'm gonna share it and I'm gonna sew into it. In order for my career to be completed the way that I want it, I want another Olympic goal. No question. I got one more chance at this. If you're a good steward of those gifts, it means that you have a civic duty to all the people whose lives are intertwined with yours. You know, so I want to be, like I said, the face of the wrestling. I want to be that star that people can look up to. Who's going to win? I don't know, but I never bet against the king. So everyone wants to see the comeback story, but very few people want to go through the fall. This is it. This is all I have. This is this is my last chance. Win or lose, I've still done amazing things in the sport. And that's why I'm so excited about where I am today. I take pride in being able to beat these guys who have been bred to be successful. I want everyone to know who Jordan Burroughs is. I'm thankful for all my opponents who continue to elevate me through this process. I grew up in Siglerville, New Jersey. I really come from a working class family. When Joe was growing up, he was like a practical joker. He liked to play a lot. He tried to be the funny man. He always had to be the center of attention wherever he went. He was a, the little tiny boy, so he had the Napoleon complex. When they played the game, he, he always wanted to win. He's very competitive, so. When I was a kid, I didn't really know much about the sport because no one in my family wrestled. And so growing up, my heroes were in the WWF. Like, I used to watch those guys, Macho Man Randy Savage, The Ultimate Warrior, like, those were my favorite guys growing up. I didn't know anything about, like, John Smith and Cale Sanderson, any of those guys. I was into the guys that were throwing people through tables and hitting them with chairs. Like, that was, that was my WWF. I started wrestling when I was five or six. I can't really remember the exact time period, but I remember vividly bringing home a flyer from school. He was like, hey, mom, can I wrestle? My husband and I said, absolutely, you know, whatever Jordan wanted to do, Jordan could do. And so when I went to my first day of practice when I was five years old and saw wrestling mats instead of tight ropes in a ring, I'm like, what the heck is this? It's not what I've seen on TV. And so it was at that moment we realized that it was a pretty cool sport. There were a ton of kids that were my size, my age, some were even smaller and younger than I was, and I was the youngest of four. I was the runt in our family. And wrestling was one of the few sports you didn't have to be big in to excel. It took a while for me to develop passion for wrestling. For a long time, I just used it as an outlet to have fun. I used to love to go to practice to play games. I didn't want to wrestle the tough guys who I knew were really good and could possibly beat me up. I'd say between like my sophomore year and junior year of high school was when I really started to be more engaged with the sport and involved, kind of seeing who the best guys in the state were. I was getting better. I started to improve. I was beating guys my junior year that I was losing to as a sophomore. And then I wrestled Frank Molinaro in the state finals. So he escaped first, and I lost. There's a picture of me like this, and you can see Frank in the background like this. And uh, I remember I laid on the ground, I cried, and my coach came and picked me up. If he hadn't picked me up, I'd probably still be there crying right now, full beard, fro, dreadlocks, still crying at the boardwalk hall in Atlantic City. But he picked me up, and uh, I was bummed. I didn't know what it took to get to the next level. I remember my high school coach sat me down and he was like, what do you want to do after high school? And I don't know, I just gave him the most generic answer ever, like wrestle in college. And he's like, how? Like you don't even like train at your hardest. Like you don't give your all. Like this is not a game. This is like, these dudes are serious. This is some serious competitors who have dedicated their life to this. So I come from a wrestling family. My father wrestled growing up and then he wrestled in college for a little bit. I was born first and then he had three boys. I, my twin brothers 
are a year younger than me, and they started wrestling at five. So I was six then, and my up, my youngest brother had been four, was four at the time. So we were, you know, we were thrust into wrestling very easily, and my or very early. So back then, you know, women's wrestling was not what it is now. So he he just knew like I want I want my boys to wrestle. He was really passionate about it. He loved the sport. He loves wrestling probably more than almost anybody I know. So he he put my brothers into youth wrestling and he also coached them going up through um, through high school. So I was just thrust into it um, as a kid, always around it. I knew the lifestyle very well. And I, I did other sports, but I was doing, I was practicing them like in the wrestling room during our practices. <laughs> like I, I just, was around it all the time so I was, I'm very familiar I was very familiar with it from a young age and you know I wasn't a wrestler myself but I was actually my brother's practice partner so I didn't compete but I know my grand B role and my double leg takedown pretty well that summer July 1st was the first time you could call a recruit um legally through the NCA and so I remember after being a state finalist my junior year, I'm like, absolutely, this is New Jersey. There's one class, there's a lot of good people in this state. I lost Frank Molinaro, he's a stud. I've gotta be recruited by someone, whether it's Rutgers or Ryder, or someone in the area wants me to be a part of their program. Which is wild because I went on zero official visits during the fall of my senior year. So while everyone's picking all these places that they're gonna to go to and dang down five schools out of, let's say 10 or 15, I had zero zero i didn't have a choice to narrow down to so i spent most of the fall figuring out what i was going to do once i graduated because i didn't think there was going to be any chance that i was going to wrestle in college i knew that i wanted to and i was second place in the state as a junior so i had the pedigree to do so but i couldn't afford it so i was like if i can't get a scholarship to college there's no way that i'm going to be able to compete at the best schools so i won the state tournament and that was in march of my senior year and I still wasn't getting recruited. And by this time, March of 06, my senior year, all college scholarship money had been like accounted for. Like no one had any money left. And if they did, like they probably were saving it for someone that was coming along in the future. We went to senior nationals. I had a bunch of tough guys in my weight class and I'm like navigating my way through this tournament. Bang, another victory, boom, another victory. Beat another state champ. Another guy who got a scholarship made it to the finals. So then people were like, ah, this guy's not bad. So I, I actually first met you when you came to see Vince. Yeah. Back in, shh, this must have been like 04, 05. Yeah. Um, and I remember at that time, Vince and I were neighbors, we lived right next door. And so he was like, hey, Nebraska coach Mark Mann is gonna come <laughs> visit today. And we used to spend so much time together in the summer. Uh, we play Madden every day. We just hang out at the crib, watch movies. And so I was over his crib that day when you came over. Yeah. And so I remember being excited about getting a chance to meet you, even though you weren't recruiting me at all. I was just there to see you. Um, yep. But then I remember us making kind of like a, a slick comment, like, hey, maybe next year you can come back and recruit this guy. Yep. And at the time, I was a 112 pounder. Yeah, and well, I hadn't I even did. placed in the state. You know, And so it was like one of those moments where like, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, sure. From that moment, it kind of gave me the motivation, not only meeting you, but seeing Vince go on to Nebraska, because yeah. no one in our area was doing that. They weren't really competing at a super high level. And so when Vince went, and then I remember him coming out of red shirt during the uh, national duels that year, yep. and he beat like Senate, and he beat Paul Bradley, yep. he beat uh, Tyrell Todd, all those guys. And there was a huge article in the paper. And so I remember getting in the car with his mom to take us to school that Monday, and she gave me like a copy of the newspaper article, like this kid's setting the world on fire, true freshman yeah. at the University of Nebraska. And I remember going into my senior year, I was like, I wanna go to Nebraska. They're not like yeah. heavily recruiting me, but if I get a chance, I wanna go be with Vince because it's obvious that they're doing something right there. He was always really good, but now he's jumped levels, yeah. like instantly in his freshman year. So that was really cool. So that was like kind of my first uh, thoughts about going to Nebraska, being a Husker, and being excited about, you know, being a part of the team. And I signed like a couple days later, but like there was no fanfare, no huge signing day. Like basically my mom was like, listen, sign this NLI, because I left it on my kitchen table for like a week straight, because I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't have a ton of offers, but I realized that this was a serious decision and it was far from home.
when I first got here in Nebraska, I hated it. It was an absolute culture shock for me. I didn't have a lot of friends. I had to learn the ropes. I was just another guy on the team. I kind of sat down and had some conversations with the coaching staff, told them what my dreams and goals were, and those didn't align with my work ethic. And so when I got to college, after only being a single state champ, I won a single state title my senior year of high school. So I remember getting my, my Letterman jacket and I was super excited to bring it to Nebraska because I wanted to show it off. I didn't win until my senior year. I was at my Letterman jacket and it kind of represented my home of South Jersey and everything that I had accomplished up until that point. So I remember going to freshman orientation that first week at Nebraska when I arrived in Lincoln and I'm going around meeting everybody else on the team, shaking hands like, hey, Jordan Burroughs. In New Jersey, I was a one-time state champ. And so as I'm meeting all the other freshmen, we had guys that were two-time, three-time. Even the guy that was a four-time state champ never lost a high school match. So I remember after that freshman orientation and meeting all the guys, I went back to my dorm room. I took off my jacket. I folded it up, put it in the box, and never wore it again. Because I realized from that moment on, like, it didn't matter what I had done in the past. Every single guy on that Husker wrestling team was the best guy on their team. The best from their town, from their city, from their state from their region of the country. And I really was gonna have to do something to separate myself. So as my career started to progress, I had my struggles early on. So we, we, we look for kids that are, you know, that love the sport, right? That, that have some resiliency to them, that are, that are raised right, you know, come from good families. And they, you know, they know the, the value of right or wrong, they know how to work, they know the value of work. Um, you know, it's, it's guys that have high, high offensive output, um, guys that look for competition, you know, if you can get a kid that loves to compete, comes in with a chips on with a chip on his shoulder, and and loves the sport and has no distractions. I mean, this, the, I mean, his ceiling is high, mm -hmm. really high. We knew he wasn't a finished product, obviously, no one is. But but we knew, you know, he really needed to really take that year and mature. It was like sink or swim. I had so many distractions off the mat that I couldn't really get good as a freshman. First semester as a freshman, I had like a 1.7 GPA because I was like sleeping through classes and I wasn't turning in papers on time. And that first wrestle off, there's a kid, actually I'm good friends with, his name's Casey Goobles. He was from Randolph, Nebraska. He beat me like 13 to six and he was a walk-on. So here I am, I'm on a full scholarship. I'm a hot shot from Jersey East Coaster. This guy's a walk-on, two-time Nebraska state champ, no scholarship money, pounds me. We get another guy on the team named Dominic Moyer. He was actually a senior at the time, beats me up five to zero. I couldn't even score a point. I couldn't even get out from bottom on him. I can't even beat my own teammates. Like, how am I gonna beat the country? I can't even beat my own teammates. I remember my assistant at the time said, man, we might have made a mistake with Jordan Burroughs, you know? I remember sitting down with one of my coaches and he said, listen, you're from a middle-class family. Your mom's a pension processor. Your dad's a construction worker. Your dad wakes up at 5 a.m. every day, regardless of the weather, to go and work. And you've got the opportunity right now. You're on, on a full scholarship here at the University of Nebraska. You can change the direction and trajectory of your life forever. Right? What do you want to do? And I'm like, hmm, that's a good question. I, I really don't know. And he's like, well, what do you want to accomplish as a wrestler? And so I'm like, hmm, prototypical answer. I want to be an NCAA champion, right? And he's like, listen, what I just saw and what I've seen from you over the last few months is not indicative of who you just told me you'd like to be. So he sat me down and said, listen, if I have to send you home and we remove and revoke your scholarship, your mom's gonna be very unhappy. <laughs> and I didn't wanna see my mom <laughs> back at home. And so I realized the opportunity I had in front of me and I thought it was necessary for me to really change the, the type of effort that I was bring into the practice room every single day. So there was no special profound moment where I was like, wow, I'm really good now. It was just a lot of consistent changes, just working a little bit harder, right? Going to the lift and trying to lift as much weight as possible, break my PRs. We were running sprints, trying to win every sprint. When we were eating, trying to make sure I was managing my caloric intake. When I was on the road, I was making sure that I was watching the way I spoke to other people and being gracious with my peers. And so all of those small decisions really helped to separate me from the rest of the people. Coming into my sophomore year, I came out firing right away. Like I just was improving. My double was getting better. I was learning how to position myself to hand fight, but I was still mentally not there yet. I didn't want to beat the best guys. I didn't want to compete with the best guys. I was hoping for a guy to move up in a dual meet. I was hoping that he'd get beat by another guy or upset in a tournament. And 
rearrange the placements in the brackets and I can wrestle someone easier. Manny happened to do an interview. They're like, man, that Jordan Burroughs kid is extremely tough. We had finished fourth as a team. He's like, you have a great team this year. Like, what do you think Burroughs sits in your team as a leader? And he's like, man, Burroughs is an absolute warrior. Like, he's gonna be a national champion. Once I knew that Manny believed in me, it made it a lot easier for me to commit, dedicate myself to going all out for him. You can compete for a coach that you trust. There's nothing like it in the world. You do anything that guys tells you to do, and you want to win not only for yourself, but for him. When he was in my corner, it really gave me like an added uh, emphasis to compete at my best and to prove that all the work they had put in was, uh, was the right stuff. What has Mark Manning meant to you in your life? I mean, he's changed my life, right? Like, I came from a place where we had like no pedigree and no tradition of wrestling. So like, I didn't know what it was like to wrestle at the highest level. And I think Manning's one of the few coaches where, like for him, it was more important to create young men and give them opportunities more than it was to win, right? And so when you see that and you realize that you got someone that's trustworthy as a coach, like you'll do anything for him, right? And so like, I bought in because I believed before I even had won. Like I hadn't won yet before I started to change the, my work ethic and the way I approach the sport. And like, that's when the results started to come. I'm like, you know what? What are my alternatives, right? I don't listen and just go through the motions and stay average, or I can listen, buy into his philosophy and try to become great. And I'm like, I want to be a national champ. As we get ready for 157 pounds now, and Jordan Burroughs, unbeaten the number one seed out of the University of Nebraska against Michael Poeta of Illinois. Well, let's take a look. We'll update our standings for you at the end of this period and show you that Burroughs Ohio State just got closer. And at the very end of this period, Burroughs with a takedown. One second left, he gets a low single to Poeta's left leg. I'll take care. There's a good shot by Poeta. Neutral! Neutral! Again, the defense of Burroughs so quick. Well, he really throws those hips. Jordan Burroughs. And he got two to wrap it up. A champion for the Nebraska Huskers, Mark Manning, the coach. Right, so I started losing close to the good guys. And then I started beating the good guys. And then after beating the good guys, I started to dominate the good guys, right? And then after that, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm really good. I'm really good at this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what I can do with this. I'm gonna see how good I can become if I became a leader just through my success. He thought of himself different, um, not in a prideful way, more in a, uh, hey, I put in a lot of work. And I wasn't a leader. I was the youngest out of four. I wasn't a leader growing up. There were a lot of people who didn't think I'd ever be successful because I was extremely timid and relatively small and undeveloped as a young man. But I just stayed the course. I think we all have something special within us, but it takes time to release. Right? For me, I was a really small guy. I had this physical presence inside of me, but I had no idea how to unleash it. And so with a lot of discipline, a lot of sacrifice, and then a lot of consistency, through years of training, all of a sudden I started to get a little bit better. And I was hungry for victories. 2009, so 09, 2010, I wasn't wrestling well. We went to Vegas, I'm wrestling a kid named Justin Gaethy from Northern Colorado. Getting on a single leg, get his leg up high, this guy goes to dive between my legs, and as he dives between my legs, I go to cover, and my chin comes down on his hip, and. My jaw smashes shut, cracked two of my molars. So I defaulted out of the Vegas tournament when I hurt my teeth. And so I missed the rest of that tournament, which would have been additional, probably another four matches. I went home, I looked down at my phone and my best friend from high school, Vince Jones, he sent me a text message like, hey, I'm sorry to hear about your grandpa. So immediately I called my mom, like, mom, what's going on? Vince just texted me and said, sorry to hear about your grandpa, like, what's happening? My grandpa passed, they didn't even tell me that he died because they knew that I was in the thick of my season. So I talked it over with Coach Manning. He's like, dude, you got to go. It's no brainer. The following week, December 19th, 2009, is where I tore my LCL and PCL against Steve Brown in Central Michigan. We get into this crazy scramble. I'm laying down on the mat. I'm like, kind of moving my knee around. I asked the doc, I'm like, how is it? He's like, you're done. Like, no question, you're done. 
the rest of the season. Boom. LCL and PCL gone. It is going on. Two weeks ago, defaulted out of Vegas to root canals. A couple of days ago, I was in Jacksonville to see my grandpa die. Now I'm here in the training room, laid on the table, returning NCAA champ, undefeated. Just took my first loss in about a year and a half, and I'm out for the season. My fifth year senior year, I guess my second senior year, 2010, 2011, I knew I was, I was in a good place. Like I had spent all summer training. I actually went back to the Olympic Training Center briefly with Manning, because he was one of the coaches on the 2010 team. And uh, in 2010, when you were one of the world team coaches and you came back from Moscow with the DVDs and you showed me 74 kilos, you go, hey, you gotta watch this Russian guy, Denis Sargush, he's the two-time reigning world champ. If you wanna win a world title at some point, you're gonna have to beat this guy. Denis Sargush, two-time world champion from Russia. I said, Jordan, concentrate and beating this guy. Manning would always tell me that year, like, listen, you see these videos and these DVDs of Dennis Sargouche? This is the guy I want you training for. Yeah. And I remember at the time, you know, I never really dreamed of wrestling at the Olympic Games when I was a kid, because yeah. no one in, from my area had done it. This was before you could follow your favorite wrestlers on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. So all I saw was what was in the Win Magazine, yeah. you know, when I was in high school, and that wasn't a ton. And so, I remember when you kind of brought that back to me, you're like, hey, Kenny Monday, Nate Carr, Absolutely. all these guys, Melvin Douglas, Townsend Saunders, you're you're those guys. You're cut yes. from that cloth. And so I was like, well, shoot, if they can do it, maybe I can do it too. Tonight, he'll face off with a three seed, Tyler Caldwell, and Jordan Burroughs with a perfect record of 35 and 0, the 2009 national champion, is of course the number one seed. How did this slow down Jordan Burroughs? This way, can you see the shot on this young man? He is lightning fast. But I like what Caldwell's doing in the open, except right there. He's a Burroughs incredible with his double leg. Caldwell's trying to become Nebraska's first two time NCAA champion. And another takedown. One man. Caldwell has been unable to get anything going on his feet. He needs a big move to get back. Final five seconds for Jordan Burroughs. First two-timer for the Nebraska Huskers, Jordan Burroughs. Jordan Burroughs, a two-time national champion, and this year he is perfect. So my youngest brother, Maddie, my brother's all wrestling in college, but my youngest brother uh, was pretty good. He wrestled for American, and he wrestled in the NCAA championships the year they were in Philly, which happens to be the year Jordan won it so i was there to watch my brother he always jordan likes to tell a story because he, like, wasn't <laughs> I love the story. <laughs> he loves telling the story because we were all there to watch my brother and we were there in the early rounds and i just so happened to be sitting right behind a mat where it was like a thursday morning or like it was the earliest session but there's hardly anybody in the stands and Jordan came out to wrestle, I don't know, somebody in the first round. And my dad recognized him. And my dad was like, watch this kid. <laughs> he said verbatim, watch this kid. He's incredible. And he's going to be the next Olympic champ. And I was just like looking at him like, oh, he's like tall, dark and handsome. <laughs> so anyways, I added him on Facebook like later that week. Shout out to Facebook. I know. It's such a generational story, like and I guess that weekend after you after you won, yeah. right? You I mean at some point when you got some downtime, he was going through his firm request and he added me and sent me a message. And we just started talking and to be honest, we were friends for like probably a year after that. We yeah. just talked because we were in two different cities. I was in Buffalo, New York. I was working as a um a journalist up there and he was here in Nebraska. So like we never came across each other. So that, that's like always an interesting question when people say, how do you meet? How did you meet? Cause we didn't meet until about a year later, he did a camp up in Buffalo and he messaged me and asked if I wanted to come out and meet him. And I, I went and met him. Said, yeah. Immediately after that, that's when my freestyle career started. It was me, you, Ursuline Snyder, just wrestling every day. Yeah. It was like crash course for freestyle. In this couple of weeks, we got to teach you how to defend a gut, <laughs> teach you how to defend a lace, you know, teach Edge you how to the get mat. out of the front headlock. 
edge yeah. of the mat, yeah, push outs, all these things, like trying to learn all the rules in this condensed period of time. And it's crazy, like what we were able to do. All right, here we go. Super excited about this one. 74 kilograms. We got Jordan Burroughs in the red, taking on Andrew Howe in the blue. 30 seconds to go. Burroughs, wow. Russell close in with the ties. Burroughs, though. Andrew Howe defending. Wow, good hips by Howe. Into the tie. And Burroughs gets the double. Unsuccessful there. Howe defending. It's like Howe knows when it's coming, and he's going to... Score another takedown, Andrew Howell goes up 2-0. Three, and there you go. Second period goes to Andrew Howell. We're gonna see a third. This is getting interesting. Howell comes in right away, snatches a single, and gets it in the air. In shape to score, and there you go. One point takedown for Andrew Howell. Back to the leg, Jordan Burroughs. He's gonna try to, and he does. He takes Andrew Howell out of bounds on one point to score on shots, score on front headlocks. And he gets to a shot, Burroughs, some super heavy hips into him. And there you go. Andrew Howe shooting again, shooting again. He's on the edge. And there's another point push out. I felt that Jordan believed that he was going to be a world champion that summer when I was always in his ear, just telling him that after workouts. Going to weigh-ins, I felt good, made weight, everything's good. And then the draws come out, and he's like, Man, dude, you can have Sargoosh your second match. And I was like, Phew. Everyone shook. When they saw my draw, they were like, well, there's in the burrows. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, yo, like I was confident. I I knew at that point I was wrestling at a really high level. I could take anyone down in the world. There's not a person, there's not a man in the world that I can't take down. <laughs> Here we go, Jordan Burroughs in the red, United States. Dennis Sargush, Russia in the blue. Burroughs in his first world tournament. Leg shot, Burroughs. Sargush comes around underneath. Leg shot, Burroughs. Fifteen seconds left. Sargush is in. Can Burroughs defend this? They give the point. Leg shot. Burroughs working well. Gets in on the leg. Takedown. Leg shot, Sargush. Mark Manning, Zeke Jones. Jordan Burroughs, leading 1-0. Russian shoots, he blocks, drives him over, 2-0. The Russian's gonna come with everything he's got for the next 15 seconds. Burroughs in on the leg. Sargus trying to score from the defensive position. time and Jordan Burroughs of the United States defeats the world champion from Russia. Burroughs storm has arrived. But I knew you could but, uh, and I, I, I knew and uh, the rest tried to cheat you and you, you overcame them and yeah. that was awesome and I Which remember is, John Smith was so pumped. Yeah. I mean he was so excited and uh, you know that was that was a cool moment for you guys at wrestling. Yeah, but yeah, it was it was it was great. I remember I was actually watched when he won his world championship. I was like right next to John Smith, and he was like hitting me on my back. Like he was like, you know, it was pretty cool to see like, you know, John cheering so hard for you know, you know, he had a dog in the fight. It was a U.S. guy, but and I was like so emotionally overwhelmed after that match. I almost passed out. I remember going back into the tunnel immediately after, and I'm just like sitting there like this. I thought I had won it. I didn't realize I still had three more matches, but I knew that from that point, my life had changed. Now, I had arrived. For the gold medal, and they are in the blue, Jordan Ernest Burroughs. Very good wrestlers, these boys.
Now, here's the two leg changes that to do with improved in Korea. And this is a good move again by Jordan Burrows. But it's not going to be enough. And Jordan Burrows, the world champion from Istanbul last year, is now Olympic champion. He has the gold medal in the 74 kilogram class. So he does a lap of honor. The boy from New Jersey, who now lives in Nebraska. After that, it was a few months after London that he hit me up and he was like, you know, I, I'm, I'm tired of doing this by myself and, you know, I love you. And so we officially started dating after the Olympics and, you know, within a year we were married, so. My dad gave a speech at our wedding and he was like, you know, I always, he's like, I love my son, but he's like, I always thought I'd have, I always dreamed of having like an, an Olympic gold medalist as a son. And, you know, now I do, it's just a little differently. Nobody ever talks about that. Like when you marry into a relationship that, you know, somebody else is a very high, you know, they're, they have a very high purpose on their life. Yep. Um, and a lot of people want them and need them and ha they have to answer to a lot of people. It's hard for that other person to accept that sometimes. I had built a name for myself in journalism in yeah. Buffalo and I had to like just release that. And yep. so I let that go. And then on top of it, compounding that was that I moved to Nebraska where I didn't have my own friends, I didn't have any of my family. So I was literally doing everything with him. So I went from, okay, I'm a really important person yeah. in Buffalo to you, I was literally his help me, like his helper. Yeah. I was traveling around with him and people were just like telling me how great he was. And I'm so, I had so much pride. I was like, yeah, like I know he's great. I married him, but I'm great too. So it took me, I would say a few months to like appreciate it. And then it was like, I, I learned to see it for how beautiful it was. What I've done since London has made me more memorable than what I did in London. I kept going, you know, I, I kept putting it on the line. People ask me, like, can you replicate what you did in London in 2012? I'm like, absolutely. I'm so much better now than I was then. My expectations have risen to a point of, I don't just want to win, I just want to dominate. This is a legacy cementing opportunity for me. Two-time Olympic gold medalist, three-time world champion. That's five total in six years. And I don't know if anyone else out there in the world at 74 kilos is doing what I'm doing. It's gonna be a fun summer. It's gonna be a fun summer. Two babies, two golds. Be a fun summer. That was the first time that I really had to confront a large loss. I was the favorite, right? I was number one ranked wrestler in the world at 74 kilograms. Well, I mean, it was tough. I mean, I was with him uh, in his hotel room. You know, it's easy to say, okay, it's, it, it's fine, you'll win another. What if you don't win another? And there's never a moment in which you have the ability to have captured the world's attention at such a high level and have the uh, the willingness to perform. The expectations are so high. You bring that podium outfit, you got your wrestling shoes, your bag with all your gear in it, and your expectations are, I'm gonna leave this day today with an Olympic gold medal, right? I'm gonna repeat the success, and not only repeat the success, but improve upon the success that I had back in 2012. It was a tough public failure. He was just crushed. Um, th there weren't many words shared. And so I had to really reckon with the fact that there were a lot of things that I lost, a lot of opportunities that I lost on that day. Rio was definitely the hardest thing to get through. You know, you for four years, you kind of 
put this one event, this one day on a pedestal and you set it there and everything you do and everything around it is to try to work and achieve this one thing. So Rio, as hard as it was, it was very eye-opening and it gave us a ton of perspective and a ton of depth. And I think it allowed Jordan to become a lot more relatable. You know, Rio was the first tournament that there wasn't like a very easy storyline that could have been put behind it. Like, this is why he lost. You know, after that Olympic Games in 2016, I took about two and a half months off. I went to a training camp in November in Colorado Springs at the Olympic Training Center, and I, I wrestled with David Taylor actually one day. And I hadn't wrestled in literally two months. I hadn't even touched the mat, put on a pair of shoes, and we won a simulation match, and, and I did really well. And I'm like, damn. I can remember texting my wife that night, and I was like, I'm, I'm pretty good still. And she was like, duh. <laughs> like no crap like of course you're still good you had one freaking bad day like she was like trying to snap me out of it like I was delirious she's like snap out of it you're fine you're gonna go back you're gonna wrestle you had a bad day it happens to everyone Jordan Burroughs, the champion, finds the way to get it done. Well, his humility, his quality, and in the end, his technique has paid off there. Like my job as a wife, I think, is to make sure that he can maximize his gifts. I think in 2012, I think he didn't believe anyone could beat him, but I think now he's kind of gained a little bit more perspective on, you know, what happens in life. The fall was what refined me and forge me into the man that I am today. So I'm thankful for it, but I also know that I wrestle to be a good steward of the talents and the blessings that I've been given, and that alone. I feel amazing. Uh, it, all I can say is God is good. My family, my coaches, my training partners, I just think of all the people that put so much work into helping me get to this platform. You know, you guys get to see the championships, the hard double legs and the commitment here, but you rarely get to see the definition of what makes a champion behind the scenes. I was a runt growing up. I was the youngest of four. I was a 103 pounder as a freshman in high school. Like wrestling is a, a relatively, you know, kind of taboo sport. We're considered misfits worldwide. And so, I never was really particularly confident until I started to arrive at the peak of my abilities and realize what I was capable of. I mean, even if I never wrestle another match in my life, I feel like I'm certified. I certif I'm certified, I'm a legend in this sport, and no one can take that away from me. Family's gotta be above wrestling. I can only wrestle for a short period of time. Like, I always look at my athletic mentality and think, man, I've got a, a couple years left to do this. I set out to do this in 2011. I'm thankful for John for pushing me indirectly. I'm thankful for all my opponents who continue to elevate me through this process. Don't get old, stay young. I'm thankful for my wife for letting me go on the road for weeks at a time away from my family to, to pursue greatness. And he was on this pursuit and on this path that was so inspiring. And I just was like, I was drawn to it and I just wanted to help him. You know, I, I got a great wife. I'm really, I'm really thankful. My wife, she's, uh, she's an amazing woman, and uh, I, I can't do this without her. The world championships are important. I've won six of them. I've only won one Olympics. In order for my career to be completed the way that I want it, I want another Olympic gold. I got one more chance at this. Like, if in the past, you're like, I'm still young. I can maybe do this again. I can give it another shot. This is it. This is all I have. This is, this is my last chance. I just know that today I'm a champion, and I'm thankful for it. I'm in position to be the greatest American wrestler ever. I love the process now. When I was a young man, I didn't. I just wanted to wrestle in the big stuff that were important that people were watching. But now, you just enjoy the beauty of the sport. Who I became was really based upon 
the people that I was surrounded with. Like I never really considered myself particularly talented. I was never big, strong, fast. I wasn't, you know, this prodigy as a young man that people could be like, oh, that guy's gonna be an Olympic champion someday. Like I look at it as like, we are sharing a dream now and we are working towards one goal. My, my advice is always to stay focused for as long a period of time as you can. You know, when I was growing up, I was never the best. I wasn't even the best wrestler on my street and somehow I became the best wrestler in the world. All I knew was I was willing to work hard. I was willing to work hard and I was blessed with a ton of people in my life that always encouraged me and pushed me in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Determination, uh, faith, perspective, um, consistent effort over a long period of time, anything is possible. There's still gold to be had, right? There's still wins on the table. Just like fun to be had, moments to be captured, gold, gold for me. I wanna win. Um, I don't have to win. It's not necessary for me to feel like I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish in my career, but I would like to. We work really good together as a pair and as a team because individually like, we both have such different gifts and we try to complement each other with them. And vice versa, he does the same for me, but his, his role and his gift has just got a spotlight on it. What do you hope your life does for the world? Through all the difficulties and the doubt, and the feeling of insignificance. No matter what, like I always believed that my better days were still ahead. I hope it allows people to find their purpose and their passion and to pursue it with intent.